to Perfectly Normal, a podcast that brings you love, courage, and connection. And I'm your host, Michelle. I'm a life coach, artist, author, and pharmacist. I'm the founder of Elevate Life Coaching. It's a seminar and coaching company. Let's jump right into the show. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining in and listening to my Perfectly Normal. So this week, I guess everyone have heard and seen the news on coronavirus, right? So I work in a hospital setting, and you know, right now my the the hospital I work at, um, they haven't come up with a strategy or plan yet in terms of you know what happened when coronavirus is in outbreak or in the hospital. What do we do? Do we go to work? Do we stay home? Like we as health healthcare professionals. What do we do and how do we handle that situation? And what brings up the topic today would be fear. So I kind of wanted to use this topic and and talk to you about fear. And just yesterday, I was on a podcast. um, uh, Someone invited me to be um, their, their speaker. And I was on the podcast and the host asked me this question, where do you think the negative self talk come from? And because that's the my my expertise i work with negative self talk so then i i was describing and this is this is my answer so where does negative self talk come from so if you think back in our childhood when we were going to school or you know going to a new job or finding a new job and and moving out and maybe getting married throughout all our transition in our life we somehow inherited a lot of that fear, that fear of being rejected, the fear of not being accepted, or the fear of just not doing well enough compared to our neighbors, compared to someone else. So we have that culture that is built based on fear. And where does fear come from? And if you think back, you know, perhaps you were watching your parents or your parents' parents and and generation to generation, we carry these beliefs, certain beliefs that we need to be in certain way in order to be successful in this life. So in order for us to be successful in this life, we need to have bigger house. We need to drive a better car. We need to go to better places uh, for vacation, you know, next door Joe went to somewhere Caribbean. So we have to be able to compete with that in order to fit in to the society that we live in. Because otherwise, we don't feel that we are connected to, to everyone else because based on everyone else's standard, this is what's going on and this is what's expected what's expected by our parents. This is what's expected by our culture. This is what's expected by our our standard that we have learned throughout in our entire life. And, you know, even just from a personal experience, you know, my expectation was that women need to look a certain way and they need to have a figure shape, right? So if I don't belong to any of the shape that I believe that I was expecting to be perfect, to be normal, then I don't belong in this world. And that was creating a lot of fear for me, the fear of being judged. And if you think about it, if you think about who created that expectation and who set up that standards and and who said that women need to be in some kind of shape, us, we did, people did. And we all created that fear from passing on to generation to generation. And now looking at the coronavirus, what do we see? We see a lot of fear. Like people are afraid of being in contact with someone who's just happened to have a sneeze. People are afraid of running out of food. So they go to the market and they start stockpiling at home to prevent themselves from hunger. And people are afraid of just expressing like 
do stop going to the supermarket. It's not something that requires you to to empty out the shelves so that no one else can buy any rice. I mean, come on, think about it. Are you preparing like a lifetime kind of crisis, or are you just preparing for the fourteen days of quarantine? So all you need is a fourteen day supply. Can you eat fifteen pounds of rice in fourteen days? I mean, come on, be realistic. So with the fear that we're seeing and we're feeling, it's no wonder you know our action shows that our action shows avoidance, our action shows hatred. Our action shows greed, and we're blaming each other for what's going on, what's happening. Oh yeah, it's the Chinese. Oh yeah, it's you know this group of people. Oh yeah, it's because you're flying. Well, how about that? Show some empathy to each other. How about that? Show some compassion to each other. We're in this together. So, so the reason why we're all prone to this coronavirus is because we're all human beings. So, so of course, the virus just like the flu. You sneeze, it'll travel. So, is it necessary to create such a dramatic action and taking such extreme measure of stockpiling from the supermarket in your home to prepare something that might not even happen? So, what can you do on individual level to not only prepare yourself for for Um, not getting infected by by coronavirus, but also don't live in that fear based culture where everything that you do and say is a f- reflection out of your fear based value. So, a couple of things on a healthcare、uh, professional standpoint. So, make sure you wash your hand. You know, every time you go out and you come back, you wash your hand. Um, if you have alcohol wipes, or it's actually not alcohol wipes, you have to use Clorox,、um, the bleach wipes, to wipe your counter or wipe any handles that you touch. Or you know, when you go to go to places, just carry one of those um um wipe wipey thing and and get used to washing your hand and cover your mouth from sneezing. When you're sneezing, cover your mouth like the basic. Manner that we all should have practiced every single day. Those are the things that you need to be looking out for. Not discriminating each other, not hating each other or another culture, and not bashing another culture's behavior because they're living based out of the fear culture. So we need to get together and and really focusing on what is it that we can do together to to get through this. This is a crisis, a worldwide crisis. It's happening everywhere, and it's happening everywhere again because we're all human beings and we are prone to catching these type of viruses. So again, I, I get so worked up when I'm talking about this fear base.、Um, Mentality and fear-based culture, because everything that we do and feel and see is all based out of fear. And if you examine, you know, where does the fear come from? It's coming from generation and generation of practicing the same way. So my parents was actually, you know, ready to go to the go to Costco and stockpile, and and I had to be the conscious person and tell them, listen. You have enough food at home. You don't need that many, and and we're not going to eat everything. So just relax and just wait it out, and don't create a panic. Don't create a a a such like a nationwide panic to everyone that, that you're we're going to to empty out the shelf. Like there's no need for that. I mean, come on. I mean, yes, there are people who um there's death. Out there, and and so those are who are in the high risk group. So people who are over the ages of fifty five or sixty five, and children, younger children,、um, those are the population that we need to protect and we need to care for. I mean, if you're a healthy individual and you're working, you're perfectly fine. There's no reason for you to panic. And it is your responsibility to take care of others, to make sure that others do not get harmed. And that's what creates the beauty in the in the humanity in this society that we take care of each other rather than you know just thinking about taking care of ourselves. So in the situation of the coronavirus, what kind of precaution and or what kind of measure are you, have you been taking at home?、Um, how do you help each other? And what action do you take? 
on an ind individual level and also, you know, at work. So perhaps you're setting up example by wiping your desk every time, you know, you use it or even after you use it, you wipe it down so that the next person can, can relax and knowing that it's been sanitized. So washing your hand, please. And I've gone to like bathroom and come out and I see people not washing their hand and they just go out. And, and that to me is just, ew, and this is America. <laughs> so let's talk about normal. <laughs> yeah. So I love to hear, you know, what is your, your thoughts on this coronavirus and what do you think about the fear-based society? What is it about the fear-based society and how does that trigger our negative self-talk? So I love to hear your thoughts. And again, you can find me on Instagram at Elevate Life Coach, or you can find me on Facebook at Life Coaching by Elevate. And of course, you can always find me on my website at elevatelifecoaching.org. And thank you so much for listening. And hopefully this will inspire you some thoughts for today. And perhaps that those thoughts will turn into actions. And have a good one. Hey, thanks for joining me this week on Perfectly Normal. Make sure to visit my website at elevatelifecoaching.org. And if you found values in this show, I appreciate a rating on iTunes and Spotify. Or you can simply tell a friend about the show that will really help me too. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. And be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.